The Singers uh, got started uh, shortly after the History Project did. The History Project began in 2006 uh, to take part in the commemoration of the Amistad slave ship. It involved uh, a group of people who uh, already had some singing interests. Some people were already singing in choirs and, and church groups uh, and others uh, involved in the History Project who uh, were interested in singing the abolitionist and anti-slavery songs of this period. And over the past several years, we've done a couple of dozen performances. The uh, historical researcher for the group, Rebecca Edwards, published a book last year, 36 Anti-Slavery Songs, uh, which we use to take the material from uh, when we do our uh, concert performances. The songs uh, reflect the strong sentiment of those who were opposed to slavery in the United States at that time. It brought together an array of interests, uh, both political and religious, uh, secular uh, interests, as well as the influence coming from uh, freedmen in the North. I am an abolitionist, I glory in the name. Though now by slavery's minions hissed and covered o'er with shame. It is a spell of light and power, the watchword of the free. Who spurns it in the trial hour? A craven soul is he. I am an abolitionist, then urge me not to pause, for joyfully I do enlist in freedom's sacred cause. A noblest strife the world ne'er saw, then slave to We may 
think of people who were in slavery having escaped from the South, and that's certainly true, but the first people who escaped from slavery around here were escaping from slavery here in New York and New Jersey. We did a little research into music that was sung at anti-slavery conventions and rallies and meetings before the Civil War, and we found a really rich array of music. And then over the years that followed, we decided that we would like to sing more and more of that music, and we ended up getting some historic clothing from 1860 to sing these these pieces of music. They range from sort of patriotic songs to a, an array of hymns and uh, they even borrowed from minstrel music and other sources. So they used an, an array of musical styles and they used these to bring the abolitionist music to the public. They wanted to convey the experience of slavery so many of these songs talk about the experience of mothers who are separated from their children or the hardships that are endured by people in slavery. And many of them are very open critiques of America, including parodies of My Country Tis of Thee and other songs like that that convey this is a great country and this is a place of freedom, but we still have work to do. My name is Ken Moody, and I'm a member of the Mid-Hudson Anti-Slavery History Project group. Uh, the purpose of the group is very simple in one way. It's to do research about slavery and anti-slavery activities in the Mid-Hudson Valley. John Bolding, he was a slave, a runaway slave from the Carolinas who made his way to Poughkeepsie. And worked in a tailor shop and eventually had his own shop. And one day a woman from the Carolinas who was visiting in Poughkeepsie and recognized him. They got a U.S. Marshal who arrested him and took him to New York City to take him back to where they say he belonged. The people in Poughkeepsie liked him so much and were so incensed by this action that they had a public fund drive and people in Poughkeepsie donated money uh, there was even a couple of people in Albany that donated some money and sent it down. And they raised, I think, a little over $1,100. Or I think it's like, I'm not sure of the figure. But they raised the amount of money that was needed to buy him back. So this Poughkeepsie bought him back and put him back in business. John Brown. Oh, yeah.
sisters are we. Honor to him who has made the bondman free. Loved evermore shall our noble ruler be. Freedom reigns today. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Freedom reigns today. John Brown's soul through the world is marching on. To the hour when oppression shall be gone, all men will sing in the better ages gone. Freedom reigns today. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I am president of the Black History Society of the Dutchess County Historical Group. And um, we are interested in anything within our county that we can promulgate black history and let people know about it. This cemetery really has a very, very long history. It started back in 1700s with Derek Storm, who bought property in this area. And the cemetery is where he buried and other members of the Storm family of their slaves. Brian McAdoo of Vassar College did a, a dig here, and he also probed this land. And he found that about 80 to 100 graves were in this section alone. We've counted 120 or so stones, but the stones could be anything. The Catherine Street Center's um, people installed this stone over here to my right. And uh, the stone says the Storm Slave Cemetery. Yes, it is. But we know about Elizabeth Johnson because here's her tombstone. She paid for this herself. 1848 is when she died. And in her will of 1843, she said, I want to be buried and pay for my tombstone in this cemetery. So this cemetery not only holds slaves, but it holds free people also. Emancipation rides majestic through our nation, bearing on its train the story, liberty and nation's glory. Bring it along, bring it along, bring it along, through the nation, freedom's car, emancipation, bring it along. Before us and the flag of freedom or a 
course we will shout the sounding chorus. We're for freedom and reform. We're for it. We're for it. We're for it. To go before us. We're for freedom and reform. We're for it. We're for it. We're for it. To go before us. We're for freedom and reform. See the people run to meet us at the depots, thousands greet us, all take seats with exultation in the car emancipation. Huzzah, huzzah! Huzzah, huzzah! Huzzah, huzzah! Emancipation to the world's happy nation. Huzzah, huzzah! Huzzah, huzzah! Huzzah, huzzah! Emancipation to the world's happy nation. Huzzah! Freedom seekers needed to get from one point to another to another in their journey to freedom. And that is referred to as the Underground Railroad. Normally, the tradition would be that you would travel at night, or you would go from one uh, designated place, and then you would be transported to another. And the Quaker network would be from one Quaker community to another to another. And this whole region of New York State has multiple Quaker communities. The Quakers did not start the movement, but they were very much involved with it because of their philosophy of equality. And um, it's a fascinating part of our American history. But because it's all under the radar, it wasn't written down, it's often overlooked. And part of our research is looking at the traditions of the Underground Railroad, of freedom seekers, of free black communities, of communities that were actually integrated right from the beginning. The Nine Partners Meeting House, where we are, was built in 1772. It burned, and in 1778, 1779, it was replaced with the brick building that we are in today. Quaker tradition, would be of plainness. And within a Quaker meeting house, there would be no pictures, certainly no crosses, no statuary, no stained glass, the things that we normally associate with a religious institution. The exception for Quaker is this image. This was a promotional in, from the 18th century in England, and it was published in newspapers. And it was the ship company boasting on how efficiently they could pack slaves to transport them from Africa to the New World. And they were double-deckered. So it isn't just one layer. You would have multiple layers of it. And if a person, ind individual, um, died, you'd simply throw them off the ship and continue on your way. And they boasted with the efficiency rate of this. Quakers were horrified. Oh, oh, oh.